It is m- m- Monday, January the 22nd. Good morning. What the hell was that? What? Ah, it was, was like a weekend. remix. Oh, I heard that. A remix of Black Dog. Let's add some more music on top of the outro. I don't know what just happened. I do know this. If your name isn't Candace Wheeler, you probably, like me, enjoyed a lot of football over the weekend. I'm still pretty jacked because every year the divisional round seems to be the most entertaining weekend of football we ever get. And this weekend was no exception. I just have to say, just a, just a tip of the cap, uh, a, a raise of the shot glass to any and all of our friends and family who support the Buffalo Bills. Good Lord, what a tortured, uh-huh. cursed yeah, franchise yeah. and fan base this is. Do you see that guy just sobbing yes. in the stands? They kept zeroing yes. in on him. Yes, I did. Uh, towards the end of the first game, like late in the uh, Lions-Bucks game yesterday, uh, I, I just tweeted, uh, give any Buffalo friends a call. Make sure they have paper bags for the breathing exercises and yeah. plenty of hand towels for the flop sweat. This is not going to be a fun day for them. Uh, and you know what I think I like most about it is because I have friends from Buffalo. Yeah. And although Minnesota statistically is not any better in the big games no, than the Bills. No. No. Uh, in fact, they've been to far fewer AFC cha- or NFC to AFC cha- but uh, championship games, uh-huh. right? Conference championship games than the Bills. But I mean, it's they've got a miserable record. But we still look at the Bills and go, yeah, but Buffalo, heartbreak Buffalo. D- j- you know, Josh Allen is what he is. Yeah, uh, he's the he's the Jim Kelly. The it's era, it's Jim tough. Kelly. You know, as much as we think they've had an amazing run right now, it wasn't easy to be the Rolling Stones in 1967 because there was this other band around that was just like, oh, crap, they're still here. That's Josh Allen looking at Patrick Mahomes and now Lamar Jackson. I'm amazing. I'm great. I'm a Hall of Famer first ballot. But I got to keep playing Patrick Mahomes. If I'm Josh Allen, I'm calling my agent and I'm saying, please get me to the NFC. Just get me the hell out of here. I can't stand seeing Mahomes in the postseason anymore. An absolutely brutal ending to the game. The first half, uh, well, it was a tale of two halves. You know, Andy Reid made more adjustments. The Bills only got seven points in the second half. But what an entertaining, fun, fun game that was. Um, and, and I don't want to just go right past the fact that our 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 our, our NFC North, uh, you know, uh, 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 rivals the Detroit Lions. Well done getting to the NFC Championship, where they will be massacred in San Francisco. I don't think they have a chance in hell of winning that game, but it's an exciting thing for the Motor City. Talk about a starved fan base. Uh, they would happily, they say this now, switch places with Bills fans. Although Bills fans, I mean the ulcers, the 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 the, the antacids sold last night in Buffalo. I, I got to be off the shelves. You can't find the tums in that town. I feel like, and I I compare Josh Allen to Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly's a Hall of Famer. Josh Allen most likely will never make it to the Hall of Fame because he'll never go to a Super Bowl. But I disagree entirely. Just so yeah. I've said it for the record, first yeah. ballot Hall of Famer. Well, we'll be long dead before he's done playing football. Probably um, so. He's a beast. I yeah. Uh, he is a beast, but he's he makes the big mistakes. He always mm-hmm. brings the big mistakes. He's always going to be the guy that falls short. I, I don't think, I, no matter what team you put him on, because he makes the mistakes. Mm-hmm. Josh Allen does. He For the first short. Yeah, I thought this might be their year. I was, I was thinking Buffalo all week. I really was. I was like, anybody I talked to about it, um, I, I was saying, like, you know, if they can't beat the Chiefs this year, then just fold down. They're going to do it. This is their Super Bowl. They will be so excited for this game. You know, they, they'll, they'll, they won't make mistakes. And Allen didn't for most of the game. Um, but boy, oh boy, I woke up yesterday and, I mean, literally, I was just one of the first things. I'm having a cup of coffee. I'm like, oh, these games will be great. And I went, what am I talking about? Of course the Chiefs are going to win. I'm I'm crazy mm-hmm. to think Buffalo is going to get over, even at home, against Mahomes and Andy Reid. And I and I completely changed course and thought, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I think the Chiefs are going to take this. And because until I see differently, I just can't I just can't back the Bills. He was good until that last series, and then yep. he kept pushing it and uh, throwing passes into the end zone where he didn't have to do that. He had guys open 15 yards down the field, they, he did be have meticulous, the, and he pushed it. He did have the one really long ball early in the fourth quarter that, that went right through the receiver's hands. To that Diggs, was, yeah, yeah, Diggs normally like calls Stephon, that Dude, Diggs come on. Last night, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, that was tough. I mean, just one of those. Mm-hmm. Not one of those long throws in the second half would have changed the game and would have changed my wager 
just needed a oh. few more yards on the day, and I would have uh. been dancing a jig. But uh, <laughs> these things happen. But uh, boy, the Lions uh, over over Baker Mayfield, nice redemption story. Didn't have it. Um, I have an old Cleveland Browns, one of my closest friends from Cleveland. And throughout that game, he's texting me because he had big points with Detroit, and he's like, "Where are those classic Mayfield interceptions? What's happening?" And then, of course, oh. on the last play <laughs> for the Browns, he or for the Bucks, I should say, he, the the Cleveland Baker reared his head. But that's a great win for Detroit. I mean, wh- and as a, as a Michigan native with a lot of family over there, I'm excited for them. I'm not a Lions fan, never have been, but man, that's a group. I mean, 1957. Last time they uh, won a championship in football, the Detroit Lions. So yeah. congrats to I'm them. I'm just happy for Bob Seeger, you know. Seeger looks good, <laughs> feels good, having a good time. Yeah, he's happy. Um, but but I, I do think that, I don't think that success travels west to, to Ninerville. Uh, the Niners um, uh, took out another NFC North uh, rival of ours, of course, the Packers. Uh, say what you want about Brock Purdy, and I've been laughing all season for at everybody who says he's an MVP candidate because he's anything but. However, um, then the final two minutes of that game, uh, Brock Purdy went six to seven and uh, led the team down the entire field and got the, the points they needed. Yeah. That's what you pay quarterbacks for right there. Not the first 58 minutes, but the 59th and 60th. Yeah. That was an impressive win against a really scary looking ahead Green Bay Packers team. The youngest know, team okay. in the league, by the way. I know. Whew. Quarter quarterback league obviously and they don't have to go into next season with the the only thing that can really plague a team and that is uncertainty at the quarterback position so and they're young and they've got some cap room so good for the pack yeah purdy really stunk it up except for you're right they're down the stretch and 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 even probably more so the entire fourth quarter he seemed mm-hmm. to kind of come back around yep. but statistically and i mean he passed for over four thousand yards this year had a great season statistically the best 49ers quarterback ever in a regular season so I mean, he's legit. We'll see. I mean, it looks like right now a tale of two games this Sunday. The conference championships, you've got a big favorite in San Francisco uh, against Detroit. No one's going to be thinking the Lions have a chance. Might find ourselves in an, in an absolute, you know, down-to-the-wire game. And then you've got two exhilarating quarterbacks, phenomenal offensive talents in Baltimore and Kansas City. And and because it's the playoffs, that game will end up being 12-10. Just watch. You just Every time I think I know something about football, I am proven to be way, way off base. But that was an exciting weekend of football. Uh, it's an exciting Monday around here. Well, because, you know, we don't have an option. We, we have to have an exciting Monday. That's what we do for crying out loud. We've got a lot of things to get into today on the show. And I, for one... Football jacked. Minnesota Timberwolves still look good. I'm in a good. I'm in a good mental headspace. Uh, everybody else, you with me? Everybody okay? Candace, you haven't said much. Yeah, oh, that's right. We're talking know, about football. Um, I'm sorry. I was just really busy with my friends over the weekend, um, but I am happy for my friend Cassie, who um, is a huge Packers fan, and she was just texting me all night they on Saturday. Oh, they lost. Yeah, oh. <laughs> oh, I missed well, that. So you're happy well, for I had kind her. of a rough night on Saturday. Good for you. You, you, I mean, you, you, you started early on Saturday. Well, so my dear. this is what happened. I was totally fine, and then I went to go see um, this really fun band called Mr. Winky, and they're um, <laughs> they're just really great guys. Don't blame um, Mr. Winky for your hangover. <laughs> no, it's not their fault. I was totally fine. But I had decided someone gave me a fireball shot um, at the end of the night, and I took it, and I was just, I just like fell asleep. I just, I like had to be taken home. Mm -hmm. So I'm the problem. (laughs) Go to hell. It never happened to me before. I have never had this happen to me before. But I had to be taken home because I was like asleep. One fireball (laughs) shot too many. One. Wow. I don't know what yeah, happened. Hey. I really like didn't even drink that much, so I was like, kind of concerned that I was drugged or something. Well, but that, I, I don't know. know. I thought the same thing. I was a little worried. Yeah. But luckily, I had a good people around me that helped me out, but it was kind of scary. I think it's admirable. You didn't know who won any of these <laughs> silly football games <laughs> over the weekend. I, I think right? Packers fans might want to start drinking fireballs <laughs> well, just to forget the endings of I games. Honestly, right. and so we were texting, but now it makes sense what she said. I thought like she pooped her pants in a good way. Um, but no. <laughs> what would be the wow. good way? <laughs> wow, like, yeah. I, yeah. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> um, diaper on. I said, are you freaking out right now? And she's like, I'm freaking out right now. And then I guess like a half an hour later, she said um, she just pooped. And then I was like, oh, that must mean like in a good way. 
Well, oh, you know, relief. you know, if 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 I know Cassie, she's gonna drop a douche right in her drawers during a game. I mean, that's Cassie. Is that, <laughs> well, that classic? Sucks. I was classic for Cassie. Whatever. Uh, my my, I have one, I have one diehard, dedicated, lifelong cheesehead in my life, and he was literally texting me at the end of the game, saying, "I'm so proud. I love this team. We showed up. I mean, he was not bumming at all. He was so happy just to be there." And I thought, "Man, come on, Loser. it's Title Town. You're supposed to yeah. be miserable. What's the matter with you? What's this perspective all about? This is yeah. sports, for God's sakes. Lose yeah. your mind." Take a crap in your pants like Cassie. Right. Send that crap to the junior high kids playing sports, not for professional Lessons. Sports. Lessons. Win right. or die. I wonder if Mike Evans will have anything to say about the playoffs that we're interested in hearing. We'll find out at 630. <laughs> Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line. 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Monday, January the 22nd. Right now, at this very moment, it's time for the Mike Evans Hollywood Report. Hey, good morning, Steve. Good morning, Candace. Good morning, Zeb. Good morning, Tony. Can you believe that football game? Unbelievable Kansas City Chiefs and Buffalo Bill. Oh, oh, this report brought to you by Marcus Theaters. I'm so excited about the uh, games this weekend. What a bunch of great games. Tomorrow, Tuesday, Marcus Theaters will be happy, proud, to give you $6 for any movie you want to see. That's Marcus Theaters every Tuesday. They're special. Man, I, I just couldn't believe the game. Kansas City, it was, a, it was one of the best games I've ever seen. So the AFC Championship game will be Baltimore and Kansas City. NFC Championship game will be the 49ers and Detroit. Football! Oh, what a game. Of course, the uh, four glasses of wine helped a little bit too. Uh, more sports. I heard a rumor that in 2026, the Super Bowl may be pay-per-view? What? No. Hard to believe. Uh, more sports for you. So uh, you may have heard that after 20 years over the weekend, Callaway Golf has dumped golf's biggest jerk, that'd be Phil Mickelson, for comments that Phil recently made about Saudi Arabia. But is it true? Phil agreed to use <laughs> Callaway equipment exclusively in 2003 because mm -hmm. Callaway agreed to pay hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of Phil's gambling debts. That's the word that I've been hearing for the last 20 years. Whew. So I've covered the O.J. Simpson trial right here on your show. Yep. Also the Kobe Bryant trial. Yep. Don't forget the Timothy McVeigh trial. Covered yep. that for you as well as the Scott Peterson trial. Yep. Covered a lot of trials for you guys. Yep. Well, on Friday uh, afternoon, last Friday, the Innocent Project asked that convicted wife and fetus murderer Scott Peterson get a, f a new trial? Oh, boy. Are you kidding me? Oh, boy. And you also heard on Friday that the Santa Fe authorities have announced that they will charge Alec Baldwin with involuntary manslaughter. Translation. I may be back on the road and covering a couple more trials for you sometime this year. Wow. I still can't get over that football game. Hey, everybody, have a great day. Minneapolis, St. <laughs> Paul, talk to you tomorrow. Mike Evans, see ya. Oh, wow. Fair enough. Evans, uh, legal reporter, uh, Mike Evans right there. I hadn't heard about Scott Peterson getting the Innocence Project mm. on his side. That not that the guy that they caught at the Mexican border with like 10 grand in cash, a fake passport, and like a purple wig or something? If memory yeah. serves, I, mm -hmm. I only remember that he killed his pregnant wife. That's yeah. all I remember. Well, right, yeah, right. Well, there is that part too. Yeah. Him, yeah. Um, I, yeah. I just I don't know. There's something about a border with a bunch of cash and a disguise that does not scream innocence to me. But then again, you know, I'm just a guy on the street. What can well, I the say? Purple wig just sounds fun. Well, maybe I'm, I maybe I'm just adding that one. I'm not, I can't <laughs> I can't confirm <laughs> uh, that it was in fact a purple wig. But speaking of Hollywood, uh, and speaking of uh, of not a purple wig, but of ruby red slippers, here's a bit of a local story. You remember? Remember in 2005, the Judy Garland Museum uh, up in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, somebody stole the ruby red slippers. I'm sure we all remember this story. The FBI recovered the shoes in 2018. But then there were still no charges filed. Last year, someone finally got arrested. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, 2018, somebody tried to claim insurance on them. They found out. But it wasn't until last year that a man was arrested and charged with the actual theft. Uh, the guy's name was Terry John Martin. He's 76 years old right now. And um, uh, over, uh, over the last couple of days in court... 
His defense attorney has revealed the motive. Check this out. Dude is an old, retired mobster, a, quote, reformed <laughs> mobster who just gave into the temptation of, and this is like a Hollywood movie itself, one final score. Oh, you can take it. the man out of the mob. Yeah, it's just hard to, to, yeah, exactly. You can take the man out of the mob, but you can't get the mob out of the man. At first, this is a quote from his attorney, at first he declined to participate in the heist. Old habits die hard, and the <laughs> thought of a final score kept him up at night. I think Spike <laughs> Lee is going to direct this one. Um, check this out. Here's the craziest thing about it. Martin, the man charged with stealing the ruby red slippers, had no idea about the cultural significance of the ruby slippers as he had never seen the movie. That, that's mm, his wheelhouse. Okay. What'd you say? 76, right? Yeah, perfect age yeah. to grow up in, the, in an era when that, I mean, how does a 76 year old man, yes, a life of crime, but even as a kid, yeah. You're unaware of the cultural significance of the ruby stink. I was born in 1965, and I've known about that. Aren't you forgetting the ruby slippers? Yeah. <laughs> How is that? Po I mean, I, I, I mean, I, look, I get it. There, there, we all have gaps in our cultural history. You know, in our cultural histories, we don't see everything. We don't hear everything. We're not aware of everything. But do you have to? Would you have had to see the Wizard of Oz to understand that the ruby red slippers actually mean no. something? No. No. I mean, it's just. I mean, it's everywhere. It's you know, it's a cultural phenomenon. You know, you see it in uh, all sorts of uh, advertisements. People joke about it. The whole thing. The ruby yeah. slippers, Wizard, Wizard of Oz. They're inseparable. You know, it's uh, there had to be. I mean, especially through the forties, fifties, sixties, seventies. It never nonstop. Incredible. Never, uh, he thought they were real rubies. I mean, <laughs> and the I mean, ruby look. slippers that were in a museum yeah. in Grand Rapids. Let's let, remember now when he stole these. You know how he stole them. He didn't like uh, cut a hole in the in the glass and then come down from the ceiling and go through the laser lights. No, he went in through an open window and took them from the display case. Yeah. Thought it was a jewel heist. Yeah, he literally right. thought there were rubies on the slippers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, isn't there a isn't there a Paul uh, Simon song, "Diamonds on the Soles of My Shoes," that yeah. just rings a vague bell? <laughs> um, uh, look, I, I, and, and I mean, again, I'm not going to judge a guy for not having seen yeah. one of the most impactful and uh, iconic films of all time. I'll just go ahead and say this: I have never seen "It's a Wonderful Life." Me either. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that around Christmas time. It seems impossible to avoid, but Candace, I mean, you've never I seen it either. You. No, is that the one that's in black and white? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, well, it's yeah, one, one of many. One of many. Yeah. Um, no, I haven't. I I think I tried. Is it about like the, the kid that like works for the old guy and the uh, old okay, guy? Okay, never mind. Yeah. It's a, it's a, about a it's a bank and it's a Scrooge yeah. and it's a something and the ghost of I don't know. I'm getting my stories all confused. Rings, Ozzy bites the head off. Of that. <laughs> exactly. That's what it is. Uh, no, that. But I mean, I've I've never seen that, and I'm and I'm okay with it. And at this point, of course, it's a quest. When I see it on i leave the room because you know it's like the, there's two things i've never watched it's a wonderful life and friends that's ridiculous yeah, that's, uh, sorry you're, you're but honest. at this point what am i gonna go back and start watching friends yes. all these no that's not a no, chance no, in hell doesn't age well no i there's just because because look at there's canadian procedurals on hulu i've never heard of i gotta give a try to i mean come on yeah I mean, the, look, we all have those gaps, okay? We, we And beyond It's a Wonderful Life, I'm sure. But a couple years ago, remember the huge Oscar controversy, La La Land and Moonlight? Yeah. Moonlight won Best Picture, what? but but uh, What's-Her-Name said La La Land instead. Right. I've never seen either film. I, it, yeah, after I watching either. that, I was like, I'm not going to see either one for a while. I got to I gotta let the heat die down. I it happens. When the last time I saw Best Picture was... I don't know. I mean, because I remember sometime in the 80s when they just all seemed to kind of stink, the best picture movies. And so I just, I, I think it was Out of Africa when that one came out. And everybody's like, oh. it's the greatest movie ever. And uh, I, I maybe, and, and you had to go to a movie theater yeah. back in the 1980s yeah. to watch these things. And I didn't get very far. And I went, that's it. I'm done with the Oscars. Although I've seen some Oscar movies before they won the Oscar. But hmm. I bet probably seven out of 10 each decade I've not. Really? I've not seen yeah. Yeah, I I, uh, I I was a season ticket holder to Meryl Streep early on. I I, I saw mm. out of African theater. Make no yeah. mistake.
the, so hair, many, the, the hair washing scene was exquisite. So many TV shows that were immensely popular and on for like decades, and I never saw one episode of like Grey's Anatomy, CSI, yep. uh, all those investigative shows. Never C- seen one episode. C- the original CSI watched it only because a, a good friend of ours was on the was like one of the art directors. Like hmm. she was the one who would like set up the scenes and stuff. And so you know, out of uh, yeah, hey, look good back there. I mean, well, you know, just had, so you want to say something. <laughs> she had a cool job, but um, yeah. Yeah, uh, How I Met Your Mother, Big Bang Theory. Never seen one moment of those shows. Those are huge shows. Yeah, both funny, cute. Really? That's yeah. A, uh, uh, yeah. But yeah, Grey's Likeable. Anatomy also. Not not a clue. No. Nope. Nothing. No. Nope. Uh, nope. We've all got these lapses, and and we can discuss that if you want. I mean, I mean, there there are certain, but it's weird. That, but the but the Wizard of Oz. I mean, that, again, if okay. top ten film of all time, it's still on every top ten list ever made. A life of crime takes away a lot more than just your dignity. Whew. Apparently so. <laughs> hey, you know what? Let's. Uh, but right now, let's look back. On this day in 1973, Johnny Unitas of the Baltimore Colts was traded to the San Diego Chargers. People like to forget, myself included, that my man played for the Chargers. It did not go well. He was 40, by the way. Everyone's excited about Tom Brady playing to 45. Johnny Unitas played until he was 40 back when, you know, they gave you aspirin for broken bones. <laughs> That's a tough son bitch right there. Uh, you know, on the list of players who finished on teams we'd rather forget, Babe Ruth, Michael Jordan, Joe Namath, Olajuwon, Patrick Ewing, Chris Carter, Jerry Rice, Joe Montana, even Bob Cousy finished his career not playing for the Celtics. It's tough when you see the legends go elsewhere. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. It is Monday, January the 22nd. And holy smokes, what a weird winter this is so far. Uh, We are looking at possibly being in the 50s next week. This is as warm as it gets for these here parts. I've only been here a year, and even I know that much. Uh, Minnesota's running about three degrees Fahrenheit above normal in 23 for the whole year. That was the third warmest year on record. This winter, December, warmest ever for the state. January looks to be uh, well above average as well. If we do get a lot of snow in February and March, of course, it melts faster with the angle of the sun being where it is. (laughs) This is just a brutal lack of winter we're experiencing. Oh, I just yeah, feel like so bad. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. It is strange, is it not? Yeah, yeah. haven't you done your like what's some of the some witch snow stuff that you can do? Some of that like, <laughs> round us up a winter around here. No, but no. We got some cold temperatures. I remember in ninety one or ninety two, mm-hmm. uh, taking my motorcycle for a spin out on January eleventh. My birthday it was fifty five degrees. Ho. Oh. That's January 11th, Jeez. early 90s. It happens. It, it does happen. Around. Although um, things are you know, generally getting warmer, as we see. Um, resort season. owners and tour operators up in the Lake Mille Lacs area are asking if the walleye season could extend beyond February 28th. Uh, because, you know, the ice is only now starting to maybe be thick enough and it's yeah. going to get warmer again before it gets colder again. Oh, man, it just throws everything off. And I was anticipating, I, 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 I'll just say it, and people will you throw things at me. I was looking forward to my second hardcore winter up here, and it hadn't happened yet. Yeah, yeah. people will throw things at you. Winter's yeah. very, you'd think. It, it surprises me still, the amount of people living in Minnesota, the born and raised, that uh, aren't aware you can move. Well, the you know, west or the southeast, or you know, they're just like, oh, why do I live here every year? But they they would be enjoying a winter like this. What are the numbers? I, I I read this every year. It's something like, as far as the number of Americans who live with of American adults who live within fifty miles of the county of their birth or the town of their birth, mm-hmm. it's like eighty percent, seventy percent. It's it's no, way it's higher old. than I would I have mean, thought. Minnesota. If you grew up in South Dakota. Like I did. You want to get the hell out of there. I think there were 19 kids in my graduating class. 14 of us left within like a month of our senior year. Right. But if you grew up in Minnesota, I mean, it's lakes and you get the beautiful winters and all the good quality of lifestyle. Uh, you tend to want to stay put. I get it. My my folks are both from Detroit. Um, got a lot of Lions fans pretty excited over there right now. Uh, my yeah. folks are both from Detroit. Got married. Dad took a job in New Jersey, then back to Muskegon, Michigan, then to Baltimore, then to Kentucky. He just, when a job opened up, he he with eight kids, let's go. I mean, he didn't, <laughs> as far as I know, he didn't think twice. He sure as hell didn't 
explain his thinking to any of us. He just went where the jobs were. I kept and and everywhere we lived, we were always right near a base, and so people always said, "Oh, military family," and I'd be like, "Well, no, he he was in the Marines before I was born, yeah. but no, no, he's just a guy looking for a better gig somewhere." So moving to me as a kid was just that's what you did, and then it was only you know at a certain point I looked around like my wife Rosemary from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, when her parents, we her her parents both died in the '90s, but you know she was in her 30s when her dad passed, and she'd had one address and one home phone number her whole life, same house, same phone number. And to me, I was like, "What? That's <laughs> insane! I've lived in five different houses with my family, or whatever wow. it was." But then I've since realized, like, "Oh yeah, that's actually kind of crappy as a kid to get bounced around like that." Did you have some staple things that you uh, needed to put down in whatever new house you were in? You had your your special thing that made it feel like home to you? I have a, uh, you mean as a kid, like when we were moving yeah. as a kid? I have a rock. I have I have a tiny little painted rock right. that my sister-in-law gave me when I on my seventh birthday. Or wait, sixth birthday. And and um, it was just one of the few things I ever had that was mine. Like it wasn't a hand-me-down. Mm-hmm. I mean, it literally fit in my pocket even as a kid. It looks like a blue and yellow ladybug. Is You know, 70s hippie people mm-hmm. used to paint rocks. It was kind of sure. cool. And I took this thing, and I, I still have it. It's with me, right? It's in town. I mean, I've never been without it. Uh, it's true. In my doctor's bag slash man purse, it's right there always. Whenever I, and I have had that, uh, a house in Maryland, two houses in Kentucky, Georgia, New York, LA. I mean, everywhere I've lived, every apartment, every, I had seven different dorm rooms in college, and it was, I've never lost it. I've, I've, that's the one thing I've had my whole life. Mm-hmm. Cool. If I did happen to one day wake up and not have it, I can genuinely say that would be uh, disturbing for me. Mm-hmm. That would be kind of weird. Uh, but but that was it. Nothing else. Oh, and, and we always had to have Werner's ginger ale every time we moved, just to remind that, you know, apparently we still are from Michigan, even though I, you know, I don't know. Oh, I loved his movies. How yeah. many did he make? Like Vernon? He made like three or four? Mm-hmm. What's that? I don't know. I'm, I, I haven't seen oh, any of the movies, actually. The Vernon movies. Am I, am oh. I I'm, I'm way off? <laughs> no, Verner's Vernon, Vernon, ginger ale. It's I a Detroit thing. I don't know what thing. that is around here. It's a, Detroit, it's a ginger ale that uh, it, it's really spicy. It's like if you open a can of Verner's and inhale as you're sipping, you will have a coughing fit. It's a weird thing. It's an acquired taste. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, why, I, I, I stopped trying to think about what, what my parents were thinking years ago. Were you thinking of it like the Jim Varney movies? Yeah, that's like what he Ernest was goes to camp Ver- or no, something like it. that. Yeah, <laughs> I think that was. It. I've never actually watched one of them. I mean, <laughs> no. not just the commercials were entertaining enough for me. My <laughs> mom, uh, my mom was born in 1928. She was 11 when uh, when uh, the Wizard of Oz was released, mm-hmm. uh, and also, by the way, Gone with the Wind. Two two pretty big movies that year, 1939. My mom grew up. Um, Two, two people she focused on, Shirley Temple and Judy Garland. She was big fans of both. Saw herself. My mom was a born uh, performer, a natural a ham, if you will, always on stage and community theater and stuff. And those were two people she grew up looking at like, oh, man, that would be me if I weren't in Detroit, Michigan, living through the Depression. I'd be a movie star. I don't know if she thought that. I'm just throwing that out there. But here's the thing. In my house, when The Wizard of Oz was on, by God, we were watching that sucker. Mm-hmm. The Sound of Music and The Wizard of Oz could not escape them in the Gorman household. If they were on network television, we were par- marched in front of the TV to watch. Mm. Uh, not the case. The Wizard of Oz, the ruby red slippers, as you probably remember from 2005, were stolen from the Judy Garland Museum. The man responsible for that actual theft, Terry John Martin, he is uh, now, we're getting some insight into what led him to, to commit this caper. He thought, A, they were actual ruby there were real rubies on the slippers. He thought he could fence them for a big score. And by the way, when I say big score, I mean it. He was a, quote, according to his own attorney, reformed mobster who couldn't get past the thought of one final score. How many yeah. movies have we seen where it's like, we got one last score and that's it. Then I retire from this life of crime. Yeah. The guy was literally trying to get a final score to ride off into the sunset on. He thought there were actual rubies <laughs> on the slippers. <laughs> By the way, unaware of the cultural significance, had no idea there was even a movie reference. He'd never seen The Wizard of Oz. I'm, I, I mean, what did he think of when he broke it? I've not been to the Wizard of Oz Museum up there in Grand Rapids. 
uh, Minnesota. But I, you know, I've seen, I remember when this happened. We're looking at pictures of it, and it looks like a, a shack, a, a dressed up shack. You yeah, know, it's got a fresh coat on it. And he went in through a window that was not locked right. and removed it from the display case. Not exactly your high tech crime, but these uh, things were insured for a million dollars, and he, that's what. That's what uh, sparked this whole thing. He heard they were insured for a million dollars. He thought, oh, that must be, you know, f- uh, you know, encased in real rubies. If right. No, because of the cultural significance. They say they're actually worth three and a half million dollars, and they were on loan. And I love that they just put them in a, a, basically an open shack museum in Grand Rapids in yeah. the display case. You know, I, I'm sure no one locks their doors around there anymore either, but... Uh, Three and a half million bucks. I mean, you would have thought that if he had got it into the black market, perhaps, but he was just a dimwit. What did he do? He ended up pawning him or something? Uh, he he just he had a fence. He thought he could drop him off, and then somebody, you know, whoever he went to, looked at him and was like, "Dude, these are just red house shoes. What the hell's mm-hmm. wrong? These are slippers. Who cares?" What if he wore them for a while? Maybe that's just to the, see. Maybe that's clicked really what this is together. all about. He wouldn't have clicked his heels. He wouldn't have known. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, but but uh, regardless, uh, the thing that sparked my imagination the most was the fact that my man had never seen The Wizard of Oz and was even unaware of the concept right. of ruby red slippers. Um, <laughs> as I said, I saw The Wizard of Oz many times as a kid. There were a handful. There were a handful of movies we all just had to watch. It's a mad, 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 mad world. Couldn't come yes. on TV without the Gormans all running in front of the TV. Uh, later in life, The In-Laws. There's just certain movies that families adopt. But this guy, growing up, obviously, with a life of crime, he he missed out on this entire thing. Tony, you mentioned earlier you have not seen one minute of a pretty impactful film trilogy from the turn of the century. I didn't know what to affect you guys so dramatically. <laughs> I've never seen any of The Lord of the Rings. Oh, Look at you guys. Gosh. How can you even Dang. understand Led Zeppelin wow. 2 if that's ca- the case? Yeah, right. <laughs> I know. I know. I was watching Lord of the Rings. Tolkien Trader. Yeah, exactly. And I went... Wait a minute! Half the Led Zeppelin songs are about this movie. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see it. I didn't see any of them uh, in the theater as they were released. That was baby years for me and Rosemary. But I, I certainly went back over uh, a few years later and have seen all of them. And I'm I'm not a uh, science fiction guy too much, and I'm not a fantasy world guy too much. But those movies were tremendous to me. I mean, I kind of mind-blowing at the time. I was like, man, I really wish I'd seen these in a giant theater on a huge screen so I get the whole vibe. But did you ever read the Lord of the Rings books as no, a kid? No, I did not. So you're just, just all flying just blind on all of this. So, must I, should I? Must I? No. Ah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, skip it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, mean, I was assigned that in high school, that stuff. And I was, you know, you, if you gave me a book, um, you know, The Red Badge of Courage, I was all over it. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Sure. Like A Bell for a Johnny, a World War II book. I'm <laughs> all over it. Uh, Lord of the Rings, I'd be like, oh, come on, stop. It's a guy with a beard and a staff. Whatever. <laughs> this, isn't, <laughs> this doesn't have anything to do with my life. See if you can binge all three of them today, but watch the extended <laughs> versions. Hey man, that that <laughs> Peter Jackson, my man, my man can work a three and a half hour movie like no one's business. Uh, who boy did a six hour documentary on the Beatles with another one coming. What would you do if uh, Barb walked up to you, one of our KQ listeners here on the KQ Facebook post? What significant movie or television show have you not seen? If Barb walked up to you guys and said, "I've never seen The God." Father, and by the way, she wrote it oh. as three different words. Barb's the never God seen the Godfather. Father. <laughs> yeah. Barb loved um, you, by the way. Boy, I, yeah, that's another one. I can't. You know, I I have a funny memory of seeing the Godfather for the first time. It was on. Uh, it was right when we first got. HBO first got cable TV with HBO. I was probably in seventh grade, you know, mid seventies, and The Godfather was on, and my parents were watching it. They'd seen it when it came out in the theater. They're watching it again, and there's a scene, quite famously, where Connie, the sister, uh, her husband is is yelling at her and knocking her around a little bit, and Carlo. that's Carlo, and mm-hmm. that's that what gets Sonny to come out before the toll booth scene, the whole thing. I walk in the room during the fight between Carlo and Connie, and he's calling her bad names, and he slaps her, mm-hmm. and I thought they were watching Rhoda. The sitcom, Ro- oh and God. I was like, "What is happening to Rhoda?" I yeah. was really upset. Oh Joe has lost it. Exactly. I was like, "Oh, David Grow, he's always such a nice guy," and there he is. And I literally thought, "Oh my God, Rhoda took a dark turn." Uh, and, and then I was told it was The Godfather, and I felt a lot better about it. That's hilarious. I can't imagine not having seen uh, the first two Godfathers because I, the, be, then then that led me to then watch them. They were both running on HBO that month, and I actually watched the second one before 
the first and thought that was mind boggling. So they're they're oh, both yeah. just unassailable to me. I haven't seen three yet, and uh, this, mostly because uh, you're not you know, missing I much. Yeah, I like right. it. That that that's why. You know, I watched the first couple. I've seen the first one twice and the second one once, and then the third one came around years later. And but by the time I was thinking about seeing it, it was out on VHS, and people yeah. were like, "Don't bother." Uh, so I was like, "Yeah." It's I was so annoying. Like everyone should just shut up. Why it yeah. sucks? I it was there on suck. Yes, it does. Does it it's make you terrible. feel cool to say that? Because I don't get like why everyone no hates on George it so much. Hamilton in place of Robert Duvall. And well, Sophia it's, Coppola, it's who was good. a great director, is awful in the movie. Hey, I enjoy it, and I think it was the perfect ending to for uh, Michael mm. Corleone. That was exactly the way that God. he should have gone. The only mm. scene in the movie that had any impact on me was the final scene when it, when he sits in the chair and it's thirty years old. Spoiler alert: he dies. That was I was like, oh, but that's just because of the guy from the first two movies was dead. It's just my opinion. I don't think it makes me cool to well, say a, a movie that I didn't like. Say it like that they think that they're cool. Be, be, well, yeah, that's that fine. That's it. not me. I'm too old to care. It. it I <laughs> yeah. saw it. Hey, Candace, I walked into the theater in Sumter, South Carolina, Christmas Day. Couldn't wait to see it. Had told my girlfriend, let's wait till we both get home after Christmas and we'll watch it together. Lied right through my teeth. <laughs> went right to the theater. Watched that movie and felt nothing but, mm -hmm. huh? Zaza. Come on. Really? Come on. Andy Garcia. Bummer. Oh, I just, I like it. I like the third one. All right, while we've got Candace down, let's kick her. On the 92 KQRS Facebook <laughs> post, uh, by far leading the pack of the big movie franchises that people have not seen, uh, Harry Potter. And, oh, oh, oh my God, Potter, my heart just I was stopped. A, I was oh a grown man when, when sure. that came out. It would have been weird if I had watched Harry Potter movies. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, I mean, there's a lot of people on here that have not seen any of the oh, Harry Potters. And Star God. Wars, probably running neck and neck. A lot of people just... From the get go, no, not wow. interested. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm I'm all for that. I do. Um, you know, we gotta. Well, I, I, we're up against oh, it. Oh, geez, wow! Look at this time. Yeah, I'm excited right. about there's a, there's a there's a woman not making friends fast out there. I got it. We got to talk about the bridezilla. <laughs> Am I the jerk? This isn't Oof. even. And I'm I the jerk scenario because we I think we can all agree yeah. uh, that she's a big jerk and we have her story coming here at seven thirty game show at eight hang tight connect with us on the KQ talking text line six five one nine eight nine rock that's six five one nine eight nine rock ninety two KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show, Monday, January the 22nd. Today, we've been discussing big-time movies or TV shows you've never seen. The KQ Facebook page is filled with comments. Uh, a lot of people, shockingly to me, have missed out uh, uh, on Titanic. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Crazy. Cool. Yeah. I, really, I, that, you guys really... <laughs> I that, love that, movie. that movie was just yeah, yeah. so. Well, it, kid when you saw it. it was so yeah. big for so long. Oh, yeah. uh, that, that's that's the thing. And then it's on cable. It's just on all the damn time. And the yeah. song itself is so big. I'm just surprised. I mean, I'm not surprised there are people who didn't see it. I, it just seems to be a really popular one that people skipped out on. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. I had a poster of the movie poster in my room, like sure a big version, because I was obsessed with Leo. I thought he was so freaking cute. So just taped up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, my kind mom of, what, used to get so of... pissed at me. I would just ruin my paint and sure. the walls. Yeah. stickers on my walls. And yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I think it's a, I, I, I could see why it would be a great young female movie. Uh -huh. uh, but, you know, but you, all you have to watch is when the ship goes down, that's like a third of the movie, and then Kate Winslet nude. That's it. The well, so this is what happened. Junk. I was, yes, I was a child. Um, and mm -hmm. I wasn't allowed to watch the second VHS. My mom and dad let me watch the first VHS part one with them. And it was um, a double tape experience. Yes, oh my God. two VHS <laughs> wow. tapes. And uh, but anyway, so I went. They put me to bed or whatever, and I snuck out. And I was watching it in the living room, and I like freaked out. I ran back to my room after the end of it, and I was so scared. And I guess my mom found me in my closet. Yeah. Like. <clears throat> In the middle of the night, and I was like, "Never let go!" And I was ripping down my clothes. I was having a God. nightmare. Like I walked into my closet and started having like a fit. So what you're telling us is your your mom knew exactly what she was doing <laughs> when she wouldn't let you watch the second half of that yeah, movie. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. You, but but you had to live on the edge, didn't you? You had to push the yeah. envelope. Which reminds me, do you remember the old '70s TV show called The Thrill Seekers? Does that ring a bell? 
That was on. Like around the time of Wide World of Sports, there was a show called Thrill Seekers. And it was just the show for all the cliff divers. And I think it was trying to compete with Wide oh, World yeah. of Sports. Uh-huh. It had a like short a, run. Okay. But we were really into it. It was around the same time as uh, Chunky Soup at How Do You Handle a Hungry Man? The Manhandlers. <laughs> man the Manhandlers yeah. and the Thrill Seekers. The 70s were... We were riding some testosterone, man. The Marlboro <laughs> Man was still out there. Oh, you yeah. could SWAT Evil was Knievel on Monday was nights. Jumping crap. Evil yeah. Knievel was jumping crap. That was the six a, million dollar man. Yes. Come on, man. I mean, the biggest punishment. My dad had a big stick on the top of the refrigerator that he hates when I bring up on the air. Every once in a while, he'd get someone out there in South Dakota. Oh yeah, uh, Clad's up. You're uh, your Brian's up. You used to beat that boy. No, it's just a little whack in the rear kind of thing. But. Uh, you uh, sent me to bed without watching the Six Million Dollar Man, Oof. and that was—I'll take a licking any day over missing that show. Yeah, I tell you what, man. If you weren't—if you weren't thinking about, you know, if you weren't going to bed and imagining what life would be like with a bionic woman, Lindsay Wagner, then you just weren't yeah. an all-American boy like me. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's a like like uh, uh, Tony said earlier, he hasn't seen any of the. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. I just last year, during the or two years ago, I guess it was pandemic times, finally saw some of Game of Thrones. I missed that entire thing in real time. Yeah. And that was so big. Uh, a lot of people on the KQ page missed Breaking Bad, which I which I was on from the jump. I, oh, I, that is must. one. I, I did see the pilot yeah. when mm-hmm. it aired, and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. I saw the first four episodes, and I would love to go back and finish it, but now I feel like it's just time has passed. No, no. You have to. It's you, be it, incredible. It, it would All reward right, I'll you. Be right, I'll be back later. Yeah, it'll 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 work for you. Trust me. I'll watch uh-huh. it on my phone. I can <laughs> tell you one thing: I would miss by yeah. design intentionally, and that would be a wedding. If I got this invitation, a bride has gone viral because she sent out wedding invitations, in which she said, um, "There are no meat eaters." Welcome at my wedding. (laughs) She is a vegan, and she said, if you are a meat eater, or then she went on to call you a murderer, you are not welcome. (laughs) Some family members were told they are not invited to my wedding because they don't want to host murderers at our wedding, she wrote in a page. She found someone. There is someone for everyone, isn't there? If you are, well, you would think. I mean, I I don't know. Maybe maybe that guy, that guy's, uh, you know, his firm stance on I'm with you, honey, might have been tested by this. Sir, if you're going to serve vegan food at your wedding because you're a vegan, that's per- fine. It's your wedding. Uh, and if you want to say, I will not allow you at my wedding unless you two are vegan, also fine. But mm. do not be surprised when we laugh at you and call you a, 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 a complete waste of a space right now. Like, I, I, I get all the thinking behind, you know, like, hey, animal free, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. But insisting on people and then making such a point of it for your wedding, I got to think you're not really inviting anybody that wouldn't apply anyway. You're just inviting all the members of the vegan club, right? And here's my gift registry, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get her a nice fur shawl. Uh, anyway, well, in this deal now, she not only wants her guests to be vegan for uh, the big wedding, yep. uh, but she wants them to pledge to give up animal products forever. She said she would not feel comfortable if they just went back to eating meat the next day. So uh, you uh, you can come to her wedding, which apparently, I guess, must be the greatest wedding invitation of all time. All you have to do is pledge to give up meat forever. I don't even think she wants to get married. I think she just wants to try. Listen, I went out on a... A vegan date one time. I went over to Whitey's here in Northeast, just down the road from the radio station here. Mm-hmm. I went there, and I thought maybe she might be high maintenance from the get-go because a friend had introduced us somewhere. And I thought, oh, all right, well, you know, give it a whirl. You know, different strokes for different folks. I'll go out. She was very, I'm a vegan. I mean, when you lead with, I'm a vegan, it's like, all right, we're going to have some issues here, but whatever. And I, I'm a meat eater. Mm, we both rolled our eyes and decided to go out on this date. And it, listen, if you want to be a vegetarian, fantastic. You probably did that for health reasons, maybe mm-hmm. dietary reasons. That makes sense. But the only reason, the only GD reason that you're a vegan is to be a pain in the ass because you want to upset <laughs> people, because you want to shock people. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's 99 
out of 100 of them just want to be a holes. Yeah, I'm this just is... convinced of it. So she and she told me that night. She goes, you know, normally I wouldn't date you because you eat meat, but I'm making an exception because I really think you're cool. And I'll tell you what, a little treat for you. If you don't eat meat at dinner tonight, I'll make out with you later. I was like, check. Oh, Get, God. bring me the brisket and the check, please. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I tell you, how about this? You floss the prime rib out of my teeth. How about that? <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. I, I've never thought I'd say the words the Morrissey of brides, but that's what comes to mind. <laughs> you know, Morrissey, former lead singer of the Smiths, famously yeah. won't play music festivals if they serve meat. Right, like that's his. Right. Whole, he played Coachella and insisted that all the vendors uh, stop with the meat while he was on stage, and of course they were like. Yeah, whatever, dude. Sure. And he got on stage and was like, I can smell burning flesh. And uh, and I never really thought that would translate into a wedding invitation, but here we are. I saw Morrissey. I never saw the Smiths. I had tickets to see the Smiths on their final, as it turned out, U.S. tour in 1986. And they canceled the tour like three or four days before the gig I was going to go see. And I was always, it was always a drag. That was one of the 80s bands I was really into. I never saw them. I finally saw Morrissey probably five years ago and he played the song Meet is Murder during his solo set an old Smith song and on the screen behind him for the entirety of the song is Slaughterhouse footage the likes of <laughs> oh, which God. you cannot imagine yeah. oh, and and I, I eat meat like I said I yeah. eat meat all the time I but and I fully understand people who are opposed to uh, when you see Slaughterhouse footage it's kind of hard to think about oh, I'd like mm -hmm. some bacon now I get that but man the five and a half minutes of high def video of that I was like well, hey, at least he's you know he's walking what he's talking. Yeah. He's he's sending out the wedding invites. I mean, I gotta <laughs> I give you credit for that. But holy smokes! And I and and I went to it. There was a bar late night that served a hell of a bacon burger, and I went there right after the show just to <laughs> just to offset the equilibrium that had been thrown out of whack. Yeah, I like to fart around. I'm just a good meaty fart. Really Let me tell vegan. you something. I had a vegetarian roommate once. There's nothing worse than the smells that come out of vegetarians. Oh, I know. I'm just going to say that right now. It's like, dude, keep the fan on in that bathroom 247. I don't, whatever it is, you're, whatever, you're subtra whatever you're replacing meat with is not of this earth. Uh, that, is, that is an unholy odor coming out of you on a daily basis. Wow. I, who would marry this woman? I mean, he's got to be as... I mean, who's going to attend the wedding? I mean, mom and dad aren't vegans. Not everyone in the Uncle Frank can't be a vegan. Yeah, it's I called mean, it's, it's called an elopement. Just admit yeah, it. Uh, this marriage isn't even going to happen. No, that's, okay, it's, I'm just going to call it out right there. Marriage not happening. Hey, you know, uh, here's something pretty cool. You can stream 92KQRS on your phone, and you can listen anywhere you go. Uh, you can just search 92KQRS. If you have a smart speaker, just simply say, hey, Play 92KQRS and then uh, and then check out the station anytime you like, wherever you are. It's just that simple. I love it. Right now on the KQ92 Talk and Text Line, caller 9 at 651-989-ROCK. Plays for a $100 Visa gift card and your own copy of Blank Slate, the basis for a new show hosted by Mario Lopez, weeknights at 6, 5 Central on Game Show Network, plus tickets to see Earth, Wind, and Fire and Chicago wow. July 13th at the Excel Energy Center. Don't forget to watch Blank Slate weeknights at 6, 5 Central on Game Show Network. 651-989-ROCK. Dial up. Good luck and hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. What a weekend of fine football it was. The Detroit Lions of the NFC North got their uh, work done. They beat the Buccaneers. They will go to San Francisco to play the 49ers. Debo Samuels, right now they're saying 50-50 on whether he'll be in the game. And if he is, you have to think he won't be at 100%. Mm -hmm. Without Debo Samuels, now granted, the uh, Niners were able to get back in the game and beat the Packers on a final drive of the game without Debo Samuels on Saturday. But without him for an entire game, that that's a big change. I mean, right now the Lions looking like a seven-point underdog. Without Debo Samuels, I, I'm liking that Lions team a little bit more than I would have thought a couple hours ago. I agree. I like their chances. They're exciting. Uh, no pressure whatsoever. All the pressure would be on the home team Niners. Yeah. Uh, the Detroit Lions from this moment forward just simply on a big pile of house money. Today is three years to the day 
since Dan Campbell's introductory press conference, which I'm sure you remember mm-hmm. when he said, we'll be the team, you know, you knock us down, we'll get up. But on the way up, we're going to bite your kneecap, and then we're going to rip out your jugular, right. and then we're going to kill oh. your family. That whole <laughs> Let's thing. Hear a little of it, shall we? It was great. All right, I think we have a right here. Come on, so Dan. So this team's going to be built on, uh, we're going to kick you in the teeth, all right, and, and when you punch us back, we're going to smile at you, and when you knock us down, we're going to get up, and on the way up, we're going to bite a kneecap off, all right, <laughs> and we're going to stand up, and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down, all right, and on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap, and we're going to get up, and then it's going to take three shots to get us down, and when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Before before long, we're the, going to be the last one standing, all right, I'm that's going to be falling. the mentality. <laughs> that was he got a lot a lot of people laughed about that well we all did we're still laughing about it but a lot of people really made fun of him and were like oh for god's sakes come on man this is a this is a world where you know stats and micromanagement this is yeah that's like old school thinking uh that fits right at home in the motor city and again that team is in their first nfc championship game since 1991 mm-hmm. uh and it's very exciting times over there and the niners yes brock purdy did it when he had to do it in the final minutes of the game against Green Bay but all of a sudden the NFC North I mean Detroit and Green Bay both acquitted themselves very well the Packers the youngest team in the league and they had that game in their hands uh, on the road very impressive and a daunting future for the Minnesota Vikings as we <laughs> we look at the division and go man both those teams look pretty good right now look out for the Bears too uh they're going to get they're going to get uh, I would imagine they're going to get Caleb Williams that quarterback out of USC who is special mm, that'll be their uh, next big flop at QB it's the Bears I, I mean, know what, I know it doesn't what, matter the Lions who they get the Super Bowl I know no the Bears can get uh, real good real quick they kind of started to come together a little bit at the end of the season but yeah, I don't know. I don't. Uh, rookie quarterbacks coming in first year. There's about five that have yeah. ever got the job done. But you know, it's uh, look out for the Bears, look out for the Lions, look out for the Packers. No one's looking out for the Vikings. Not um, yet. Yet yesterday again, in case you somehow missed it, uh, Buffalo Bills fans. The words "wide right." Oh God, man! I mean, oh. 30, 33 years after the yeah. first time we all started saying "wide right," that that's the first of four Super Bowl losses. Uh, loss to the Giants, wide right. Scott Norwood, the kicker's name. I'm not a Bills fan by any stretch of the imagination, and I remember that moment. I remember that guy's name. Mm-hmm. I remember the whole feeling. My sister Ann lived in Buffalo in the in the nineties, uh, late eighties, early nineties. 90s. And it's still one of her favorite places in the world. And so I was, if I care, you know, through her, I was cheering for the Bills at the time, though. Just, just, you know, you know, she loved the town. Oh, what a brutal thing that was. And yesterday for that game, now it wasn't the final play of the game and it wasn't to win, but it was just a tie. And again, that kick looked like it was good. I mean, when it left his foot, it was right down the middle. And then as soon as I could say, holy crap, we might go to, oh, where's that ball going? It yep. just, it was like a, it was like one of my drives on the seventh hole. <laughs> it's weird. Just comes off the club face looking good for about half a second. And then <laughs> that slice, that banana. Yeah. Whew. Man, that was rough. So uh, you've got Ravens, Chiefs, you got Niners, Lions, and we got all week to figure out who's going to do what. But that was an exciting weekend of football for everybody who was watching. We also have, this is kind of exciting, Tony. Tell us all about this new TV show that all the kids are excited about. It goes a little something like this. Yeah, there's a fun new game show. It's weeknights at 6, 5 Central on Game Show Network called Blank Slate. And it's hosted by the one, the only Mario Lopez, of course. It's about matching clever fill-in-the-blank answers with your teammates getting some help from various comedian guests like, oh, Caroline Ray, Sarah Tiana, Jenny Zagrino, just to name a few, and getting a bonus for also matching the top answer with the people at home who have been previously polled. So we're going to play a radio version of Blank Slate right now, and we have listeners on the line, and once we find out who they are, then I'll uh, explain how this works. All right, fair enough. That's exciting. Candace, we have a couple of, uh, we have some people on hold here. Who Who's contestant? Who are we going to throw the blank slate game at first? All right, we have Val from Egan. Val, good morning. Good morning. Are you ready to play some blank slate? I am. Excellent. That's, that's, that's good to hear. Tony's going to uh, talk us through this. Good luck to you, Val. Val, Thank what you. happens is I'm going to read a fill-in-the-blank question and ask the lovable Steve Gorman to write down his answer. And then if you can match the same answer as Steve or the people at home top answer, you're going to win 100 bucks and a blank slate board game. 
Oh, and also uh, tickets to see Earth, Wind, and Fire. Ooh. Very cool. Oh, Holy good. smokes. That is, yeah, you're well, then, well then let's do it. <laughs> let's begin, shall we? Here's your first one. Right. Val, Birdie the Bird Watcher. <laughs> Bird, birdie <laughs> yeah, the Bird Watcher? That's what it says. Birdie the Bird Watcher is a big baseball fan. Naturally, her favorite Major League Baseball team is the blank. Um, maybe the baseball fan. Birdies. Birdies. Oh, God. I don't know. We'll just say twins. <laughs> I, okay. I, right. I, I bet Steve, Steve didn't say twins, but I bet I know what Steve did say. <laughs> yeah, I, I well, I, it probably not a surprise. I, I went with Orioles as what? she is a bird watcher. <laughs> Yeah. That, that, that's the old, when I was a kid, the commercials in Baltimore, really, be a bird watcher. watcher. That yeah. was the whole thing for the Orioles. Yeah, the Blue Jays, the Cardinals. Sure, a lot, a lot of them. Cardinals is probably the one, though. People at home answer was the Cardinals. All yes. right, that's okay. We're, we're, you know what? We're just getting started. It's a slow start to the day. No one's thinking about baseball right now. Let's get back on that horse. All right, Val, number two, Stan, the traveling man, is only a fan of countries that end in Stan. The first stop on his itinerary is blank. Pakistan. All right, mm. Steve, what say you? I Well, I, I went with long-legged Afghanistan myself, mm. but, mm. you know, being a dog lover. But that makes perfect sense. Here's the good news, though. The people at home answer was Pakistan. Oh, mm. wow. All right. <laughs> Way to go, Val. Yeah, a vacation in either one, but I get the game. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, if you're looking for a nomadic sure. rug, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Val wins. Nice. What, uh, remind me and all of our listeners, and especially Val, what she has won, Tony. Uh, she wins $100 and a blank slate board game. And uh, what's happening with the Earth, Wind, and Fire tickets? And Chicago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's... Yeah, Earth, Wind, and Fire in front of me anymore. And, <laughs> and yeah. Chicago, okay. and a hundred dollar gift gift card from Visa, and mm-hmm. a and a board game. Right on, Val! Yeah. Congratulations, Val! Don't forget to watch yeah. Blank awesome. Slate weeknights at six five Central on Game Show Network. That's a fab old prize. Right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, very well done. Very well, well done. Anybody else be? smelling diesel exhaust, or is that just me? Yeah, a little diesel exhaust. Yeah, they. <laughs> Means they've got the. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, I'm just coming across. I think I've got yeah. some. Serious? Uh, yeah, I got some. Yeah, weird, that happens in uh, Studio C. That, that must just be me. Oh well. <laughs> no, they run one of the generators on diesel back there. It happens from time to time. What? Uh, really? Yeah. Oh yeah, we've had that problem <laughs> Great before news. in the studio. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Ride the buzz, man. It's fine. Deep breaths. Well, just saying, in case I, uh, you know, <laughs> if I if I seem a little down. somnambulaic here, or whatever that word is, <laughs> if I'm a little <laughs> dozy. It's okay. At least we'll die together. Well, I'm not talking about <laughs> dying. It's just a nap. I'm, yes, it's not, I'm not in for that. It's not that's, carbon dioxide. That would literally be the worst scenario in my life, Jeez. dying with you people. It's a pool of blood in my feel studio. Like we Is right that now. weird? Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 He died as he lived. No. What was that? I saw something the other day. Someone who was just like a tweet. He died as he lived. Taunting. He died as he loved to live. Taunting tigers at the zoo. Something. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry, the diesel fumes are making me. Oh forgetful. my god, how would you go on? Like, yeah, if one of us. Oh my god, I just can't. I don't know why. I've been thinking about death all morning. It's um not good. Uh, wait, hold hmm. on. What now? How so? I don't know. It, well, you, it's gonna be me, and it's gonna be soon. <laughs> I don't know. It's so sad. Like death is so final. What? I'm just in a weird. I'm having like a Barbie moment. <laughs> I, thought, this I would think someone spiritual like yourself would not buy into that death is so final thing. You don't have. Yeah, okay. don't be afraid. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Reincarnation. It's head to the light, Candace. No, well, Ozzy was playing a couple, couple uh, oh, segments ago, and Steve came in my studio and said that I was just thinking about you because Ozzy's playing, and the first thing I thought about was when he's going to die. Like that was the first thing I thought. Steve or Ozzy? <laughs> oh, Is this really? because this... one of your friends crapped their pants this weekend? <laughs> Candace's first existential crisis, and it's here <laughs> on the air live. Can you smell oh. diesel fumes, Candace? Oh no, I'm immune to those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, great record, rock record producer, uh, Jim Dickinson from Memphis. Uh, famously produced The Replacements, Pleased to Meet Me. Uh, his tombstone says, I'm just dead. I'm not gone. Oh. <laughs> great. It's pretty great. I like yeah. it. Yeah. 
Really great. Uh, we talked earlier about a bride who invited guests to her wedding only if they were also, as she is, vegan and only if they committed to being vegan from that day forward. She's like, I don't want you to come to my wedding if you're only going to be vegan for the day. And I'm sure that's exactly how she talks because anybody that would do that talks like that, mm. male or female. But that, on the heels of that, check this out. An American tourist posted online a photo of a waiver he was asked to sign at a restaurant in Canada. He ordered a burger, and he said, I would like that cooked medium, please. And the waitress said, sure, I need you to sign this waiver. By law, we're supposed to cook our beef well done. Burgers have to be cooked what? well done. And if you want one medium or anything less than well done, we just ask you to sign this waiver. So if you get sick, it's not our fault. Is that your own risk? Yeah. To, oh, wow. I, mean, just to, I mean, just to have it co- cooked normally, medium? Yes. They're not asking for a rare burger. Nope. You've got to cook it well done. What's my, my dad might be Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, well, it's so, yeah, the burger's got to be at least 160 degrees in interior. Uh, this was actually at, a, at the restaurant at a Hilton in Toronto, apparently. So, um, and, and, and a lot of people are really up in arms about this. You know what? I, I don't mind. I mean, you know, someone up in Canada got sick on a burger once, and they were like, let's just protect our business owners. If you want it done medium, sure. I mean, I don't know. The fact uh, It's better than them saying, no, it has to be well done. I right. mean, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna pay too much for a hotel burger anyway. What's one more signature? Right, sign the piece of paper, but don't tip. Well, <laughs> mm-hmm. the person right. who ordered it said, actually, as it turned out, they took a few bites and then felt like the whole conversation ruined their appetite, so they didn't even okay. finish the burger. Come on, come no, on! If you- you're gonna sign the waiver, put that bad boy down. Yeah, bring and, it out and, raw. And let, let the and, and keep, let don't wipe your chin. Let everyone see the blood on your chin from yeah. that that undercooked tiger meat. burger. Right? Did they have tiger meat down south down there? That's what we called it in South Dakota. It's raw hamburger. Just put a bunch of uh, we usually use venison burger, but you just put a bunch of spices in there and eat it raw with some crackers. Tiger meat. I uh, no, not yeah. tartar. First, first I've heard of that. I've never heard tartar, of steak tartar. Yeah. You would yeah. literally take, uh, gra- what'd you say? It's just ground, ground beef? venison. Yeah, oh, well, but you do venison. The venison, typically, you know, because that's, I didn't even get a chance to eat ground beef until I was probably, until I left South Dakota. But anyway, we'd eat a lot of venison out there. It's cheap. And uh, yeah, you grind it up and you put a little, some, uh, little, uh, whatever in there, cream of something, not cream, uh, the dried <coughs> onion mix or something like that. And bang, oh, boom, oh. You put the cream in there if you want to make it. <laughs> sure sounds a delish. Off or something, doesn't it? Bingo. Tiger meat. The oh, first, yeah. Wait, wait. You grew up eating ground venison. The first time you had ground beef, you must have thought, where's the flavor? Yeah, I did. Wow. Wasn't gamey. Yeah, yeah. yeah still that still venison. Uh, I, 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 had so, I had a buddy in college who was a deer hunter, and he would come back to the dorm and, uh, and have tons of, tons of deer meat. That's what, that was my venison experience. Uh, and, I, and he made a spaghetti sauce with venison once, and I was like, man, I've been missing out on a lot of life. Mm, yeah, it's fantastic. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Might have to get into some of this health news this morning. We are a, a radio program, you know, where we're, we have a public duty to pass along some of these things. I'm seeing all sorts of fun things on here this morning, like a new device that cures your allergies by electrocuting your nose. <laughs> it, okay, sign me up. All right. And we'll Let's go. The, the smell of women's tears. Yeah, it has an effect on men. Guess what that is? Coming up here at 830. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line. 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. Last year around this time, I was making plans to head out to Phoenix for the Super Bowl. I went out there uh, as part of uh, Radio Row, did a lot of interviews, hung out, because I, I still have a syndicated show, and I was doing uh, work for both shows, the KQ Morning Show and Steve Gorman Rocks, and it was a lot of fun. This year, the Super Bowl in Las Vegas, I just found out I'm not going. Aww. Turn it. And Bummer. I'm literally thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was already kind of dressed. I was like, oh, I got to fly all the way out there. And then I got to get up early and do radio. And, and then I got to do. And I, I, I don't know. I just, I just, it was going to be hectic. And I'm sure it would have been fun. But I mm-hmm. just got word on Friday afternoon, like, oh, no, that's not happening for whatever reasons. And all I felt was relief. And I thought, well, good for me for feeling relief instead of being like, <laughs> I want to be there. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, maybe, maybe that week I'll be like, it would have been fun. But no, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy about it. I, because I, I love, nothing more than just sitting on my couch watching football mm. all weekend as I did. Um, I, I'm trying to think of the biggest games I've ever missed. 
You know, have I ever missed... We were talking earlier in the show about uh, movies or TV shows that are huge, that everybody knows except you. Like, what have you missed along the way? Did anyone ever miss a Super Bowl? Were you ever... Oh, I, God, yeah. Yeah, I was... Mm-hmm. I missed one. I mean, I've been out of the country, but always found a way to watch them. The one Super Bowl that I was literally in flight for was the Steelers Cowboys 97 96 I don't remember that one early 96 yeah you forgot all about that one that was the Cowboys last Super Bowl championship I believe good um, yeah, missed the whole thing. I was there for the pregame, for the party, and then watched a couple plays of the first quarter and then got on a flight and missed the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I remember most about that game. Adding injury to insult, I was uh, getting all whipped up at a uh, bar, a uh-huh. uh, radio station promotion, uh, the Steelers game, you know. So, And that was we're back during the hardcore drinking days, you know. So I was really pregame and going at it during the game. Uh, the Steelers are losing. Uh, O'Donnell probably threw a second pick to Woodson at that point. He realized this isn't going to happen. And I was there with, uh, I'm not even going to mention his name, but uh, as a famous Vikings linebacker. And they had the Steel City beer there at uh-huh. the time okay. that they came out with, the uh, limited edition. Yeah. And he opened it and poured it right on my head and laughed. <laughs> Yeah, that is pretty That's funny. What I remember about that Super Bowl. Yeah. It's hilarious. And so I beat the shit out of him. Yeah, there you go. You just laid into him. Oh. Um, but on the KQ Facebook page, we've got a lot of posts about things people missed. And this one struck me. A few different people have written that they've never seen Jaws. And, yeah, I got that on the on the talk and text and line here's, too. And here's a comment. Barb wrote, up until a few years ago, had never seen Jaws. I finally watched it, and I think it's the dumbest movie I've ever seen. Are you sure it wasn't Jaws 3? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> does, does, so, so here's an honest question. Does the first Jaws not hold up? I mean, oh, I haven't seen it, it in a long time, but it always worked for me. Yeah. Special no, effects at the end don't, don't work still, but the silly. movie is brilliant. Yeah. Right. And in fact, it was those special effects that he felt like he said, Steven Spielberg in the great documentary about the making of it uh, said that, you know, at some point he realized he had to put the shark in, but there's a whole documentary about the damn shark Uh and not being able to get the shark in there. And that's when he came up with that, okay, well, we'll just show their feet dangling beneath the water with that John Williams soundtrack. Was there anything more terrifying or that view um, right from the water? He put the camera right on the water. Yeah. So you'd see it right at the water. He came up with these innovative ways to work around it and still create suspense, which created much more than if he'd had that comical mechanical shark in there. Yeah, that's very true. I, I saw Jaws 2. I did. I never saw 3. That's. I think that's the one with Michael Caine. Oh, yeah, that, the that, greatest uh, quote ever. That, yeah, about his four. house? Yeah, didn't yeah exactly. Said it, they said that's the worst movie ever, and he said, you're absolutely right. It is the worst movie ever, but it bought the most beautiful house ever. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's good to be Michael Caine. Here comes the shark, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> so. Mr. Wayne, your shark luck. No, wait, hang on. I'm combining well, characters. Right. Uh, I saw Jaws 2 in the theater when it came out and uh, as like a high school kid. And it's all about high school kids getting stuck out there. And even and even like at, you know, in 10th grade, I was like, boy, this one, this this, yeah. this isn't very no. good. This yeah. is just not quite the saw same. Saw that on a date. It was boring. It sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> the, the date? The, the Spielberg. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was the movie. I mean, but that's this list we've got up on KQ. You know, you talk about it. Scarface is on there. Rock and Rana. Oh. I love Scarface. Uh, have you, Rana, said hello to my little friend? Um, Star Wars is on here. You know, you've got your Game of Thrones. Gone with the Wind. Oh, I'm glad. I hope Mom's not listening this morning. Man. Yeah. I mean, the Harry Potter series, The Sopranos. Dan never got around to The Sopranos. Oh, uh, what was that one with Linda Lovelace? I, uh, Bronson said he never saw that one. I tell you what. Deep throat. Uh, uh, the Sopranos. I uh, saw it in real time when it was out, like everybody. Watched it and really enjoyed it. Watched the whole thing again during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And 20 years later, my God. God, that show! It was better than I. I thought it was great, and then I and then I watched it again uh, with my son, who's like, "Hey, let's try this." And the more I watched it, the more I was like, "Holy crap!" This so much about it resonated differently in my fifties than in my thirties, especially all the stuff with Tony and Doctor Melfi, like Tony and the Shrink. I, mm-hmm. I, I used to get a little okay, I get it, and now I couldn't get enough. It was really yeah. a whole different show. Uh, 20 years later, having had kids and had 20 more years of life under my belt. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, really fantastic. A One thing. Of a goal. Of a goal. Mm-hmm. There it is. <laughs> I became obsessed with ducks after watching that. Every time I see a duck now, I like want to be its friend. 
Is that true? Yeah, Just it's the, Tony and it's his the ducks. Very, yeah, the very fir- the pilot episode, right? Mm-hmm. Is where the first time we have the what's with these ducks? <laughs> um, <laughs> I've never tried to do a Tony Soprano before, and mm-hmm. since you laughed, I'll stop. I'm going to quit undefeated. <laughs> um, here's something that that I would I think would be uh, something that Tony Soprano himself might find interesting. Uh, if you want your men to be less aggressive, mm, yes, always cry. Oh, okay. I'm the already doing that. S- the smell <laughs> of women's tears can literally make men less aggressive. This is yeah. a study. And you know those smarty pants in their studies? Uh, <laughs> they tested this by having women watch a sad movie and then having men smell their tears mm-hmm. while the men played a video game designed to make them angry. This is, the, this is a real thing. Um, men were, they would let men get aggravated and then they would have the men sniff women's tears. <laughs> men were 44% less aggressive after getting a good whiff of women's tears. Hmm. Scans showed they had less activity in the areas of the brain associated with aggressive behavior. Tears have subtle chemical compounds that we pick up on. But it's not all tears. It's just emotional tears, not physical pain tears, emotional tears. And they say this is probably the way evolution used to protect babies. But even when adults cry, it tells us they're vulnerable and it calms us down. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm not. These kind of things make perfect sense to me. This yeah, don't crazy. weaponize it, ladies. Well, I, I can't that. help it. I, I no, cry I, all the I time. I raised two daughters, and I just it was my Achilles, and they knew it. Sure. Uh, and they sure. worked it hard. And but I just see, couldn't. but see, at least now you have a. You can say this is a biological response. I'm. This is this is yeah. nature. This is the. This is where I've evolved to. You know, don't beat yourself up over it, man. You can't control your nature. That's I naturally a bad dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> what was that? Me, me? Oh, yeah. I said I love crying. Oh, no, I was asking what you said, Zep. You were about to be <laughs> oh, a bad dad. I said dad. I was naturally a bad dad. Because <laughs> oh, well. I caved because that's, you know, you're grounded. That's it. You're going to learn a lesson. Young. Okay, well, you want to go to Chuck E. Cheese? Well, you know what? Let's just go straight to the Mall of America. We're getting on a roller coaster. Hey, I'll tell you who loves a good cry. This guy. I, I wish yeah. I could cry more often. It doesn't happen <gasps> often enough. And then when it does, man, do I feel good. Oh, yeah, it releases together. toxins. Usually yeah. get a good nap in right after. Mm-hmm. Let's do something that. where we all can cry together. Like, we can be like cry sisters or brothers or whatever. I feel like we're getting really close right now. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Well, you know what? That was weird. Back to the movie thing. Some guy, I've never seen E.T. on there. I had not seen E.T. Came out in 82. I was a teenager. Should have saw it. You know, huge, huge movie. Mm-hmm. Did not get around to it. My sister's eight years younger. Mm-hmm. You know, I was back on leave from the Army. And I was like, and why don't uh, I take you out to a movie? They're re-showing E.T. Yeah. She's never yeah. seen it. I thought, well, you know, I've not seen it either. I freaking started crying during the Aww. movie with my sister that was, I know, at the end. And she's like, and she gets done. And she's like, well, that was kind of fun. And I'm like, let's go. <laughs> I, know, I got she's like, choked Are you up all right? And I'm too. like, I'm just kind of laughing. I'm sorry. I swear. Well, it's a popcorn wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it caught me off guard. Summer of 82 for me, and this was me being two things. One, I was being honest, but then I also love to be the contrarian uh, 17-year-old. Uh, a month before E.T. was released, if you remember, Poltergeist was released. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, Spielberg... I believe didn't pro- he didn't direct Poltergeist, but he was the executive producer. He yes. oversaw both movies, and I was way more into Poltergeist, way yeah. cooler to me, way more of a freak out. And then by the time school got back in like late August, everyone's like, you know, back in the day when you'd literally talk about things you did all summer long over the summer because you didn't have cell phones. But everyone's like, man, ET was amazing, and I'm the guy going, no way, man, Poltergeist <laughs> way better. Yeah. But what t- what trumped both of those movies from the summer of '82 was of course. Of course, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, yes. so good. Oh, come on, man. Those those three movies alone in one summer, that was mm-hmm. big, that's big time, big doings right there. Saw Fast Times at a drive-in. That's a yeah, good place too. to see so it. Cool. Yeah, that was, yeah, me too. That, that, I, really? I saw it with my brother at a freaking drive-in. Uh, we, I don't know why we ended up uh, going, just the two of us, but yeah, I went to the drive-in. And uh, yeah, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I thought it was the greatest because I missed out on the whole Porky's thing. Porky's came out when I was in junior high, yeah. and there was no way Mama Zepp was letting me sneak my way into that one. And the yeah. movie theater is 25 miles of cornfields away. It wasn't like I could just, you know, sneak out in the middle of the night and ride my bicycle down there and, and you know, try and sneak in with someone else. But uh, so I missed out on that whole port and people were going, crit and the jerk. My parents wouldn't let me see the jerk either, you know, Damn. so I missed it. I had to see those much later in life. Uh, but Fast Times at Ridgemont High, 
I guess at that point, mom and dad had just sort of given up on us. And uh, yeah, that one was. I think I, I think I ended up seeing it like five times that summer. Pretty great, hard hard to beat. Be, between the the checkerboard van shoes, which I'd never seen before, and yeah. realized I've got to get those. <laughs> I just remember the movie being uh, finishing, wrapping up, having loved it. And there was two major themes. One was my high school sucks. Didn't occur to me that all those people were actually 27 years old. I was like, <laughs> the girls in my school don't look like that. And we're not as cool Baby. as those guys. And then secondly, we had an entire... I went to see it with my friend Brooke and my older brother Tom. And we literally drove home with this conversation as if we're breaking down all the president's men. Now, when Rat tell, when, when, uh, when Damone <laughs> tells Rat to listen to side one of Led Zeppelin 4, and then yeah. they cut and he's listening to Cashmere, that's on physical graffiti. Now, yeah. did the filmmakers make a mistake, <laughs> or is Rat stupid and doesn't know the difference? Like, we're literally <laughs> breaking this down and trying to make sense of, but hang on, he's listening to Cashmere, and that's clearly not in Led Zeppelin 4, and we couldn't come up with a consensus on what we thought. My opinion was that he didn't know the difference, he just put on Led Zeppelin, and that was kind of an inherent joke, mm-hmm. too. <laughs> yeah. But I do know that when that scene cuts and it's bang, he's driving down a car listening to it, it's like, oh my God, that's really exciting. You didn't hear a lot of Led Zeppelin in movies back then. No, no, you didn't. And I remember actually, I think that was my kind of first exposure to it because at that age, you know, I was when Fast Times came out, what was that, like 82 probably? 82, yeah. Yeah, 1982. So I was 16 years old. I hadn't jumped into the Led Zeppelin thing. That was, you know, my Uncle Frank at the motorcycle shop had things like that playing, but I didn't connect. I didn't ask questions. Sure. Uh, but to hear that, I was like, Led Zeppelin, I should go figure out who those guys are. You can catch up with Steve Gorman in the KQ Morning Show podcast anytime you want. We've got some interviews. We have a lot of fun. We tell a lot of crazy stories. Anywhere you get podcasts, track us down. That podcast, Steve Gorman in the KQ Morning Show podcast, sponsored by Candace. Devonis, I had it yesterday. Devonis, I had it yesterday, pizza and hot hoagies. That should be their new slogan. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get some merch. I need to get like a sweatshirt and a shirt and a hat. I just I just love Devonis so much. I just want to go all in. Any chance you can share with us what you had yesterday? Um, yeah, I had a hot ham hoagie. Yes! Um, add, p- add pickles. And nice. because I'm disgusting, I always get extra mayo because I'm, oh, gr- I'm yeah. gross. Oh, that's sloppy with <laughs> pickles. Great. She wants it sloppy with pickles. Uh, wow. That's not going to do anyone's health any good, but uh, you know what? I, I'll take that it's all Sunday. the way to death. It is, it is Sunday. I'm just thinking about ways that we can, you know, like make people healthier, you know? <laughs> A new device that cures your allergies by electrocuting your nose. We haven't talked about that yet. How about easy ways to burn calories without doing a damn thing? Nice. Got a lot more to get to this morning. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. Zip. Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. Here he comes. Is it the fumes? The the diesel fumes. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Monday, January the 22nd. Love does hurt, doesn't it? (laughs) God, that's what the song says. You know, sometimes on purpose. Look, I'm just going to come clean. I'm, I'm having some trouble here today. Not feeling good. I don't know what it is. Yeah. You know, my my, my 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 stomach's going crazy. I got a headache. Uh, it's just nothing. A little, nothing. A little morning radio can't take care of. Got to get back on that horse. <laughs> Can someone see his skin tone? Is he going pale? Are we losing him? I think I'm going to be okay. You know, um, I, that was an issue in that studio. I remember Terry used to always complain about the diesel fumes in there. Seriously, what they did about it. Yeah, yeah, there was an issue. I remember years ago, like a decade mm. or more. Way back then. We're kicking it old school on yeah. KQRS. Remember the 90s? Yeah. yeah we, we used to give her a lot of a grief about it, and then we'd wander in there and go, man, this is bad. It's some generator in some other part of the building that uh, runs on mm-hmm. diesel, and it's pumping right in there. These things right happen. Studio. Yeah. These things yeah. happen. I, 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 I'll come. I'll, I'll bounce back. I'll be strong. I'll, I'll, I'll muddle through this. <laughs> Don't be I'm, a hero, Steve. No, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna hook myself up to this thing called a nasocalm and electrocute my nose and see if that doesn't help. Um, actually, that that's a real thing. If you not not for um, uh, you know f- uh, exhaust overindulgence, but for allergies. If you have allergies, there is a new gadget. 
called Naso, N-A-S-O, Naso Calm. You strap it to your face, and it literally puts electric jolts into your nose. Ooh. What you part on, of that is calm? You put it on for 15 yeah. minutes a day, and uh, it's got six electrodes, three for each nostril oh. that deliver small electric shots. It sti- shocks. It stimulates the muscles in your nose. And the claim is... That making your nose muscles contract and then relax helps you to clear your sinuses and lets you breathe easier. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, no, well, thank you. Maybe, you know, allergies are a bitch. And uh, so I-, I could see why people would want relief and maybe go to extreme measures like electrocuting your nose. But maybe... Maybe let your buddy try it first. And if his sure. you know, his hair it. stands straight out, smoke comes out Candace's Would ears, we could at least get a viral moment out of it anyway. But yeah, you know, it's like these things. I remember going in for some uh, little muscle therapy on an injury I had, and they put the electronic things on there, and it made your hand jump and your you know, arm twitch and that sort of thing. It might be that same kind of thing. But yeah, no thanks. Yeah, no, I'm I'm good with just using way too many tissue and and no spray that doesn't really work, <laughs> and then and then and then pining for the days of good old fashioned real Sudafed that used to dry me out but doesn't anymore. Mm-hmm. I'll just tweakers, go, yeah. yeah, I'll just keep doing that stuff for for as long as I'm still around. They always say breathe the steam in from the shower. Mm. How Never. long you have to be in there for like two hours? <laughs> Never does a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Never does no. a damn thing. Not at all. Uh, anybody ever done the what's the thing called where the the um, you know, where you you pour water in one nostril and it comes out the oh. other, the pet, uh, the not pot. Not the neti pot? Neti pot. Mm. I've ne- by the way, fun fact about me, not only have I never used a neti pot, I swear to you I'd never heard of it until like three years ago. <laughs> and I saw something like on my Facebook feed for it. And I said to my wife, I go, look at this crazy thing. And she looked at me like I was insane. She's like, you've never heard of a neti pot? And I'm like, no. Who the hell's flushing out their na- their nasal sinuses <laughs> passages? And apparently everybody but me. Does it work? I don't know. I it. just know it from a uh, Crocodile Dundee when uh, the guy's doing coke at the New York party. And he's like, oh, I got something. I'll clear right, you right up. And then he makes him do it. But he's just really like stepped up because he's doing a bunch of coke. Um, don't remember that at all, but I'd love yeah. it if you would do an Australian <laughs> accent for the rest of the show. No way. Yeah. I all we remember is the, that's not a knife. That's all uh, I remember. I love yeah. that yeah, movie, dude. I've seen the movie like a hundred times. It's not a neti pot. <laughs> but, I don't remember a neti pot. It's a neti pot, mate. Mm-hmm. I, I remember, see, I saw it in the theater when it came out, and I guess I remember it, but what I remember more is that that guy, what's his name? Paul yeah. Hogan. Paul, thank you. Paul Hogan then became literally the world's only Australian you could name. <laughs> he did all the ads, yes. Australia, Panadol for headache relief, mate. And then he was like, I want another shrimp on the barbie and come on down. Like the, he got on that tourism tip and right. man, that guy, you couldn't, you couldn't get away from him for a little while. Didn't him. they just make another one this past summer? What, didn't I don't they? Know. I mean, where he popped back in for a cameo or something. I oh. felt like mm. I, maybe that was a dream. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I, I would watch that for sure. I was going to say, you yeah, and Candace are having the same dreams now? That's yeah. weird. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I need a neti pot. I need to electrocute my nose. That's what I need. Yeah, no, I had a coworker that used to use them, and he was just very phlegmy, I believe. Tony may have even done a parody song on how phlegmy he was, constantly <laughs> and snorting. And uh, he said he got himself one of these neti pots, and I thought, my God, there. Mu-. He said one day there was so much snot that came out of my face. It was a cup. It filled up an entire measuring cup of just snot. Yuck. I wonder yeah. if you can use a neti pot on a dog. <laughs> Interesting, because yeah. old Chauncey would really, oh, yeah. boy, as much as, as, as congested as he always I think is. he'd sit still for that. Not a chance. No, not a chance. <laughs> no way in. Well, maybe if you let him eat some more painkillers or something. Not that you let him eat painkillers. Chauncey but. had a big uh, had a big weekend yeah. Friday. He spent Friday night in a hotel. How about that? Aww. Fancy. Had, had himself a little getaway Ooh. with Rosemary. Yeah, wore the robe. Pretty pretty excited. <laughs> he did. He was he was feeling it. She uh, said he was. And he knew it was a hotel because he slept it. Like, he didn't wake up to get out. He was like, yeah, I'll just hold it, not get off this bed for a while. <laughs> that was pretty exciting. Um, and, I, and, I, and I mentioned that because I just saw this. Weirdest things left in hotels last year. Have you ever left something behind at a hotel? 
Oh, yeah, lots of things, but not and nothing weird, you know, those blocks, you know, charging cords galore. Yeah. So much so that when I go in now, uh, I don't even replace the charging cord. I just wait till I go to another hotel and go up to the desk and say, you wouldn't happen to have a charging cord for my phone, and they pull out a box of 1,500 charging cords. Yep, it's very tr- I did the same thing. I left a laptop charging cord. I, as as many hotels as I was in for years and years and years on the road, I have lost two things that I know of total because I was obsessed with not losing stuff. I I, I lost my keys once in like college, and it I couldn't sleep for weeks. I just hated the idea yeah. of of losing like my keys, and then I also lost my wallet in my early twenties, and it just it just it's whoa my god it was awful. And so when I started traveling, I had a really solid thing. I mean, I would, before I leave, my dummy check is hardcore before I leave a room because I don't want to forget something. That said, I left a laptop charger at a hotel in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2008. And I got on, and I left the hotel that morning, went to the airport, was sitting on the plane and went, oh my God, that charger's in the wall. I mean, it just hit me like I had, and I looked at my bag and sure enough, and it wound me up to no end. And my tour manager goes, just just don't worry about it. Just next hotel. And I was like, what do you mean? She goes, do you know how many chargers? Every yeah. hotel we go into, <laughs> if you ever need anything to charge anything, they've got one. And you're exactly right, Zip. I went in there and I go, hey, um, anybody turn in a, you know, I just waited till the second day there. I said, I, I think I did a made, by any chance you got like a MacBook charger and the same thing. They're like, yeah, I got 56 of them. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, that'll do. Thanks. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, but here's some things that were left behind. Uh, this is a list. Uh, the travel company put up the 10 weirdest things left in hotel rooms last year. Number one, dentures. How? Oh. How? <laughs> get that. How do you get? Yeah. I mean, you would know if you're. Uh, right. Something yeah, doesn't right. feel right. Maybe you travel with backup. <laughs> Maybe you travel with a backup set, and those were you yeah. had those in that. Yeah. I was going to say you, you, I was going to say you're charging the backups, but uh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you had them in that glass with the what? Remember the drops they used to have the TV commercial look like Alka Seltzer. Effordent. Effordent. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. right. Effordent. I remember my mom has dentures. <laughs> Maybe twenty seven years of age had to have all of her say, teeth pulled. My, oh, wow. my mom, exact same thing with my mom in her twenties. Yeah, weird. Same. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I I still contend that you know it was just one of these weird dentist things out in the Appalachians. She was raised in the Appalachians of uh, Pennsylvania, out in the sticks as they yep. literally called it. And um, yeah, she said, yeah, twenty seven and said, yeah, your teeth, you just got to pull them all. I'm like, wow, wow. wow. And dad didn't drive you into Harrisburg or Pittsburgh mm. or something and get a second opinion. But uh, yeah, mom's got the choppers, which about every, I don't know if your mom has done this, but like three times in her life, she's gotten new dentures, which changes her look and her face, which on other people, you're like, oh, I see you got some new denture, whatever, quickly get over it. But with your mom, it changed her look. I didn't like it. But they're huh. choppers. I don't. <laughs> I don't remember that actually happening, but um, no, 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 I, I honestly don't. Um, but that's not to say it hasn't. I just don't pay attention, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, to your mom, come on. So maybe, maybe there's backups. Maybe you were effort denting the backups yeah. and you left them. But here's number two, Candace. I'd like to get your thoughts. Witchcraft paraphernalia. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I might have. No, no, no. I would never leave any of my tools behind. <laughs> um, I can I can see witchcraft paraphernalia being left behind because you know the feds are closing in and you're 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 you've crossed state lines already and you got to get out in a hurry. How about this again on the same as dentures? How in the world? Number three on the list is prosthetic limbs. What? what? Nope. That's expensive. How can you <laughs> leave, how, and, and expensive and also again, what part of you forgot to attach I, an, a leg I, or arm right. that you needed? <laughs> well, you're in a hurry. You typically don't have, unlike dentures, and I don't know if you have a spare pair of dentures or not, but you don't have extra prosthetic limbs usually laying around. I would think. You know what? His you know what? Sorry? Maybe it was a a prosthetic you know what? Prosthetic (laughs) pee-pee? Yeah, I, maybe he had different thing? sizes. And, Still uh, wouldn't forget yeah, it. Yeah, we had in a movie, American Pie or there's something. There's a guy that called Harry in and Potter. said he works in one of those factories that makes them. Oh, well, they, I know they have the nut. We used to play uh, baseball around there, around what? the studio. Somebody brought in <laughs> prosthetic testicles, you know, and the yeah. guys had testicular wait, cancer. Wait, wait, They had wait. three sizes. <clears throat> and, yeah. Yeah. Prosthet- but you're saying there is a prosthetic manhood, a man root. Yes. 
The, like, like not just an enlargement it's kit. It's two but. artificial cylinders that fill with fluid to allow the penis to become but hard. But that's, oh, but that's what yeah, that. But I thought a... that. I thought when that was in there, that was a permanent thing. That's something you just apply and then get rid of. I didn't realize. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would like to think that you could I'm have still... like a Mr. Potato had different attachments for yeah. different <laughs> circumstances. I'm That'd still be just, great. I'm still just. I'm still just utilizing the one I was born with. I don't know. That's oh, just me. Okay. Well, when you have a little time later on today, gang. Go ahead and Google that like I just did and hit images. Here's wow. no thanks. No thanks. Wow. Here's here's one I can imagine. Uh, a glass eye. Oh. I, f- I found a glass eye in the no street way. when I was a kid. Oh my god, I'm I hope you for real. real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a real one. Man, what that's to it? I still got it in the drawers nice. somewhere. Yeah. That's a Rob Reiner movie waiting to happen. <laughs> the glass eye. <laughs> Creepy. Wow, you have it still for real? I think so. Oh my That's god. That's cool. Tony found a glass eye. No way! Let's get over <laughs> there. Let's take our bicycles. Hang on. Let me get some trading cards and <laughs> right. clothespins. Oh, I was so, suddenly so 10 real. again. That's, a, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's a throwback moment if there ever was mm-hmm. one. Uh, also left behind in a hotel room last year, thousands of German marks, which was what? the official currency of West Germany and, of course, the unified Germany up until 2002 when the euro came. Came in. They were stashed behind a toilet water tank in a hotel. Ooh. A bunch of money that you can't use anymore. It's literally, I don't think there's a market for money that's no longer used, you know, utilized, is there? Don't huh. ask me. I have no idea, but that's cool. I want to know the story. I, I, uh, I had a very costly, uh, long story short, and I can't go into details. But there was a, uh, a promotional tour for a band I used to play in, and one of the band guys, not named me, we were doing an interview <laughs> out in a wooded area, and something was disagreeing with his little tum-tum, and he had to go take care of business in the woods, and there was no leaves or anything, and I had to give him all my money so he could wipe himself. Oh, my gosh. That's a true story. <laughs> It cost me 80 Deutschmarks, oh the most expensive God. dump I never took, but someone else did. <laughs> oh, I think I'd be like, buddy, you're going to have to sacrifice your drawers or the it was t-shirt pretty, or something. It was something. pretty outstanding. Was goes, somebody, hey, uh, <laughs> someone hey, man, down on their luck and they found that money, would they you got any, <laughs> keep it? Hey, man, you got any money? I go, what are you talking about? Come on, man, there's no... I, got, and I was like, you don't have any? He goes, I already used all mine. I need more. And I had yeah. four 20s. <laughs> And I was like 80 oh, Deutschmarks, which was like at the time about $80. And I was like, come on, man, are you serious? He goes, I will pay you back as soon as we get back to town. But I'm, and I was like, all right, here you go. Yeah, and I always thought that was pretty much, funny. What's he eating for God's sakes, man? Have you ever I heard of a clean pinch? Um, well, we did the story. Tony said, what if someone found it a couple of weeks ago? The, That's right. I said, when do, you, uh, when do you go through your dog's poop when they eat 4000 bucks and they had to rinse off that money? and. Oh. But then they got it replaced because you can't get. Yeah, yeah this is totally different. This is just some guy walking through, probably with a metal detector. I think oh. you can find some old coins from the Altenwagen Bismarck era, and yeah. then all of a sudden he's like, "Oh my gosh, this is crappy money!" But I'll rinse it off; it'd be as good as new. Oh. I get a new metal detector with the crap money I found. <laughs> the crap money. Oh, I know my buddy Ronnie. One time, he just texted me to remind me of this. Good morning, Ronnie. Glad you're still out there, brother. I haven't seen you in a while. We took a ski trip, a bunch of us guys, and this is when the iPads just came out. I think it was an iPad. Maybe it was one of the other iPhone dealies. And uh, he forgot it. And we were, Oof. I don't know, Oof. four hours down the road driving back from Montana. Mm-hmm. We turned around and we called. We stopped. Got it, called the hotel. They said, yeah, uh, uh, we did find it. Uh, one of the maids mentioned it. In fact, the room's not rented out. If you come back, you can go up and get it. Okay, great. And we found out when we got there, and they said, no, it's, it's still up in the room. So he goes up to the room, he grabs it, and he's like, sweet! And it flies out of his hand and smashes <laughs> against the uh, uh, against the dresser there. And we just oof. looked at him like, you freaking moron. We drove eight hours out of our way Ouch. so that you could break it. That's not good. Uh, no, so don't go back. I uh, I did leave. This is early 19... Uh, this is so long. I don't even remember the year. Uh, I left a... I had a napkin with a, a phone number on it. And, uh, and I left, that's one thing I left behind. That's in a, this is like late 80s. This is local band days. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I, you know, met a girl and it was like, I think, I think she might be the one. We've really had a connection. <laughs> and she said, oh, well, if next time you guys are here, call me. And I had her number. And this is when there's like six people crammed into one motel room mm-hmm. at a time. And got up the next day and we were like driving back to Atlanta. And I just remember suddenly that thing of like, <gasps> 
I, the one <laughs> phone number. Oh, of a, no. you know, I, 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 I had a girl. This was supposed to be the one. And uh, yeah, never got it back. And I was like, wait a minute. I wrote it down. I remember everything I write down. And he couldn't get close. Damn. Uh, Tried. Made, made a few calls. I think but, it was, I know it was, I know the area code. And then I think it started with a five. I'm pretty sure it was five nine five six. To, tried a few things, and then I was like, you know, back then long distance calls cost money. Uh, yeah. You could only have a few misses, and it's like, ah, forget it. <laughs> Run out if it's change. meant to be, it's meant to be. <laughs> right, indeed. Well, what's meant to be is sports and music history. We do it every day here at nine thirty weekday. That is, hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line six five one nine eight nine rock. That's six five one nine eight nine rock. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show for Monday, January the 22nd. Yesterday's uh, Chiefs Bills game was as good as advertised. Came down to the last minute. Both teams uh, made a bunch of mistakes. Both teams had some special plays. It was a really, really entertaining game of football. Nothing about it more entertaining than tight end Travis Kelsey's recently retired brother, Jason Kelsey, oh, yes. legendary Philadelphia Eagles center. Jason Kelsey, first of all, pregame out in the parking lot with the Bills Mafia, chugging beers, high-fiving, getting the whole experience. During the game, he's up in the box with all the VIPs, um, including Taylor Swift, and he is shirtless, shirtless, singing, exhorting the crowd, jumps down into the stands at one point with Buffalo fans. But the best part by far is the Chiefs score a touchdown late in the game and the camera pans and you see Taylor Swift and the members of the family and other wives Mm -hmm. and they're all celebrating and hugging. And I think Kelsey knew exactly what the uh, what the camera angle was going to show sure. because he was seated right behind her, shirtless, calmly chugging a beer. It was the best. It was oh, outstanding. Yeah. This guy has been a notorious drunk for a long time. Remember the Super Bowl party? Came out dressed like a genie and was yes. so drunk he could barely talk. <laughs> yeah. I love this guy. He's Spectacular. Like a, he's like a fan. Uh, that just happens to be, you know, a Hall of Fame offensive lineman as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty yeah. great stuff. I mean, I mean yeah, the idea that he's out, and it's his little brother on the field, and mm-hmm. Kelsey did. Yeah. After a rough season, of course, Travis Kelsey shows up yesterday as if he's, you know, 27 years old again and has a heck of a game with a few big catches. Uh, on the other side of things, the Detroit Lions, uh, NFC foe of the uh, Minnesota Vikings, will be heading to San Francisco. Something to think about. Detroit, since the middle of last season, is 22 and 7. I mean, they've been on a. Remember, mm-hmm. they, they're one of the rare teams. They finished strong last year. And in the NFL, every year, there's at least one or two fan bases that go, well, we turned it on and that's going to bode well for next year. And that never carries over. It's not like college, it rarely carries over. But with Detroit, it certainly did. Mm-hmm. And that coach, Campbell, has got them believing. I don't think that even without Debo Samuel, the Lions are should be less than a seven-point underdog. I think that makes perfect sense. That said, that team believes, and that team's going to San Francisco with house money to burn and no pressure whatsoever, and we've certainly seen stranger things happen in the uh, playoffs. I agree. It's just going to be nice to see some. I mean, the Lions in San Francisco. There's something I've not watched before. The Bills and uh, the Chiefs. I've yeah. seen it. You yep. know, been there. San Francisco. Seen them in the playoffs before. Seen them in the NFC Championship before. The Ravens, been there, done that. It's going to be nice. That's not a matchup we've ever seen in a championship game. The Lions at the 49ers. could be entertaining. Yeah, no, I, I, it is amazing to think about how we get so used to the same, the usual suspects year in and year out. And, uh, you know, if you are under 33 years old, the Lions and the playoffs, you're like, huh? Yeah. Say what? Wait, is that that's possible? Go well, figure. I also like the fact that Baltimore seems unbeatable at home. Lamar Jackson won his first playoff game, right? So he was 0-3, I believe, had that monkey on his shoulder, got that monkey off his back, rather, and uh, won his first playoff game. They seem unbeatable, but guess who's coming to town? Yeah. Oh, no, I know. Pat, by the way, Patrick Mahomes, that game yesterday was his first ever road playoff game. That's right. Yeah. He's had home serve his entire career. That is unbelievable. What a run that sucker's on. Um, A radio station in southeastern Oklahoma is off the air because their broadcast tower 
fell down. And they thought, oh my gosh, there must have been crazy winds. There must have been a storm we didn't recognize. You know, the broadcast tower is, off, is, is usually out in a more rural setting. It's not right where the building for the station is. So uh, the guys from the station drove out there. The owners are like, hey man, let's go see what's happening. Uh, no, it was not weather related at all. Thieves cut down the broadcast tower looking for copper in the cables. <laughs> oh, sorry. The cables that hold the thing in place. <laughs> oh, they man. cut up about 80 to 100 feet of copper and they hauled it off. And apparently they got about $100 <laughs> in return for their efforts. That's it. Um, by the way, the damage caused to the tower, about a half a million dollars. Ooh. Ooh, that's yeah. probably more than this little station down there is worth. I don't know, Tulsa might be a might be one of the juggernauts down there. You just reminded me though, I forgot about this story. We have a little piece of audio here from the station manager. And the thing I like best about it is when he goes into preaching mode because I've had station managers pointing their fingers at me and going, No, listen, mister, we're doing a public service here. Either use wire cutters or something really similar to that, and they just cut the guide wires on the top section and that uh, set of guy wires. Uh, after that, that's when it uh, folded and came to the ground. We need to be able to reach uh, the citizens of there Northeast Texas and Southeast Oklahoma with life-saving information. And you've taken our voice off the air needlessly for what a hundred dollars worth of copper. Shame on you. Shame. Shame. Yeah, they're 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 not. That's not going to work. Okay, they went through a lot of work to yeah. get the copper out of those cables. That that's not it. Uh, I think I think by saying no, no, this is a felony, and you're going to prison if we catch you. That's going to get their attention a little better. Yeah, they're lucky they didn't electrocute themselves. They get talked into a small market going up the radio tower. Like, well, somebody's got to go up there and fix it. We aren't going to get an engineer here for another six more years when they uh, travel through the area. I was like, I'll do it. Mm. I like to. I like a good thrill. As I'm, I don't know, 100 feet in the air and not liking it because I have this, this fear of heights. Now the guy's like, oh, you see those uh, round things up there? Those like round ceramic things coming off of my guy? He goes, do not. And I'm like maybe a foot away from one of those. Oh. He goes, do not touch that. Yeah. You, it will fry you immediately. I'm like, you didn't tell me before. But anyway, we ended up running a wire out to a pine tree to keep the radio station <laughs> on the air for another day or two. My, uh, my older brother, Tom, in the 70s, uh, was one of the first people in, a, in that I ever heard of who was installing cable TV in Annapolis, Maryland back in the day. But before that, he had a job with a guy uh, who basically just serviced antennas for various reasons. And so my brother in his early 20s had the job where he would climb to the very top of like thousand foot towers to replace the light. Oh, yeah. it's terrifying. And would just strap on and climb all the way up. No. And we have, you know, he has photos of him up there at the top. And then he would just climb all the way down. Not No no elevator. These are just, it's a yeah. ladder for, you know, dozens mm -hmm. of stories tall. And mm -hmm. he was doing that. And in fact, when I was in fourth grade, uh, there was a tower that was on top of a building in downtown Baltimore, like a 50-foot tower that was on top of a 12-story building. And it had been, it had been uh, constructed improperly. And Tom and his boss got called. They wanted whoever was responsible said, we needed to go up and dismantle the tower so it can be rebuilt properly. And they said, okay. And they climbed to the top of a 50-foot tower, and they were dismantling it piece by piece. And when they got to the 30-foot mark, they released one of the guide wires, and the whole tower just fell like an oak tree. Whoa. And yeah. he and his boss were strapped to it. Oh. On the roof of a 12-story building. Wee. And it landed on my, you know, my brother was on the bottom side. His boss was on top. So his boss broke a bunch of ribs and a leg. My oh. brother, his pelvis was shattered. Oh, Lord. Oh, it was Man. awful. I mean, he was in a hospital bed at our house for months. The weirdest part of it to me was this was my brother, Tom, who did this for a living, and we knew there was inherent risk. My brother Jim at the time was playing basketball in Baltimore as a college student. I come home from school. My parents have gone to the hospital already. Our neighbor across the street, good old Mr. Dunlap, is sitting there on the front porch. And I'm like, why is Mr. Dunlap on the front porch? And he goes, well, Steve, I got some, I got some bad news for you. And I'm like, oh. right away. He goes, uh, your, your brother Jim was... Uh, he was injured today in downtown uh, he was on one of those radio towers and apparently collapsed. He's, he's going to be okay, but he's really dinged up. He's in the hospital. And I go, Jim? And he goes, yeah, it's terrible. And I'm thinking, well, he got the name wrong. He got the wrong brother. Tom <laughs> was the one who climbed towers. Jim, and I'm like, 
Tom trick Jim into climbing the tower. <laughs> that I, I thought it was a prank gone wrong. Tom, how could you? And I'm like mad at my brother Tom for getting my brother Jim up on the tower. And Jim doesn't know how to climb a tower. This is terrible. <laughs> and I have a good five minutes of complete confusion. And then finally he goes, wait, did I say Jim? I meant Tom. No, Tommy. Tommy's the one in the hospital. And then I was like, oh, okay. Oh. I, that makes more sense. And then I was terrified. I mean, I bet that... Uh but every time it snows, his hip starts to hurt a little bit. Oh, I guarantee it does. Yeah, no, that was that was a rough one, man. That was like Damn. they moved a hospital bed into the house, and he was in it. And I was like, yeah. this, is, this is not how it's supposed to be. This is crazy. <laughs> uh, crazy times. You know, as long as we're looking back, what the hell? How about a quick history lesson? Sports! Oh, what is the date? It is January 22nd. On this day in 2006, Kobe Bryant, basketball player with the Lakers, you may remember him, scored 81 points in a game against the Toronto Raptors. That is the second most points scored in a single game ever. Wilt Chamberlain, of course, had 100 back in 1962. 81 points against another professional basketball team. That is outstandingly insane. Jalen Rose was playing for the Raptors, and someone after the game said, I would never let anyone score 81 points. I'd break their foot. I'd break their leg. <laughs> and Jalen Rose said, I tried. I really tried. Yeah. And then <laughs> and you can pull up clips. Kobe Bryant taking jumpers, and Jalen is putting his feet under where Kobe will land, trying to get him to twist an ankle. And Kobe lands several times on his feet, and Jalen's like, I couldn't even break the guy's ankle when I tried. <laughs> yeah. The, the other four guys even run down the court with him? I don't think. At I a mean, certain they point, just no. a while, just like, yeah. yeah. Not at a certain point, you just got to let that go. Get the KQ Morning Show podcast wherever you listen. 92 KQRS.